Seven Golden Rings, A Tale of Music and Math by Rajani LaRocca, illustrated by Archana Srinivasan. Seven Golden Rings, A Tale of Music and Math. Long ago, there lived a kind Raja who ruled over vast lands. He loved music and gathered the finest players and singers to perform in his court. But the Raja had no interest in planning or calculating and did not manage his kingdom's food stores or accounts. And so his people suffered. Bhagat and his mother lived in a dusty village in the far corner of the Raja's kingdom. Their days were filled with toil and hunger, but they planned and saved to make their meager means stretch further. And Bhagat, who loved to sing, filled their nights with song. One day, Bhagat saw something that gave him hope. A sign that said, for one week only, the Raja calls on musicians to audition for the royal troupe. Ama, we'll soon starve. I must seek our fortune and win a place with the Raja. You are still young, said Bhagat's mother, and only the most skilled musicians will be chosen for the Raja's troupe. The journey will be long, and what will happen if you fail? But. Bhagat would not change his mind. This is our only chance. I must win the Raja's favor with my singing. Eventually, Bhagat's mother relented. She gave him one rupee, the last they had, and a chain of seven tiny golden rings. This is what remains of my wedding necklace. I have sold it ring by ring so we could eat. Use it to change our fortune. Remember, Bhagat, you are a fine singer, but you are even finer thinker. Consider all you have to offer the Raja. And she gave Bhagat her blessing. Bhagat sang as he walked all day. In his head, he heard a rhythm of whole notes, ta, and half notes. Ta ta, and quarter notes, taka taka. So many ways to divide a whole. As long as he had music, Bhagat never felt alone. He reached the city and found a small inn. Ten rupees a night, including dinner, said the innkeeper. But Bhagat had only one rupee, sir. May I work for my stay? I'm sorry, no. Bhagat revealed the seven golden rings. They glimmered in the twilight. Seven rings for seven nights, hand them over, said the innkeeper's wife. But Bhagat didn't know how many nights he would remain in the city. If the Raja called him the next day, he would have spent all seven rings when he only needed one. Madam? May I pay when I leave and only for the days I stayed? You must pay for each night in advance, one ring per night. Divide them if you must, she said, flinging her sari over her shoulder. There is a goldsmith nearby, whispered the innkeeper. I can separate them all for five rupees, said the goldsmith but I only have one. One rupee, one link broken. Bhagat thought and thought. If he broke the first link, he would have a single ring and a chain of six. That would work for one night. But what would he do if the Raja didn't call him for the next day? He would need to give up the rest of the necklace when perhaps only one more ring would do. Maybe he should break the second link. 
With some wiggling, he could free it from the first, and he would have two single rings and a chain of five. But if he needed to stay more than two nights, he would have to give the innkeeper all the remaining rings. Baga was determined not to waste a single precious ring of his mother's wedding necklace. How could he pay the innkeeper one ring each night if he couldn't separate them all? Baga wandered the city. Remember, Baga, you are a thinker. He heard the rhythm in his head. Ta, ta, ta. Taka, taka, so many ways to divide a hole. Suddenly, he knew what to do. He raced back and had the goldsmith break the third link. Seven golden rings became one ring by itself, a chain of two, and a chain of four. Bogat gave the innkeeper the single ring and begged him not to sell it right away. The next day, he waited at the palace, but was not called. That night, he asked for the single ring back and handed over the chain of two. Each morning, Bogat went to the palace. He waited and thought of his mother alone and hungry. Each evening, he returned to the inn. On the third night, Bagat gave the innkeeper the single ring to join the two. On the fourth night, he took three rings back and gave him the chain of four. On the fifth night, he gave him the single ring to join the four. On the sixth, he took back the single and handed over the chain of two. On the seventh night, Bagat gave up the last golden ring. This was all that Amma and I had left. May God give you luck with the Raja tomorrow. As the sun sank on the final day, Baga was called to sing at last. He sang of parched land quenched by cooling rains long journeys on tired feet, and the love of a family more precious than gold. You are good, but not polished enough, said the Raja. Return next year. Bhagat had risked everything, and now he had nothing. Oh, Raja, do not let him go, cried a voice from the crowd. It was the innkeeper's wife. He may not sing to your liking, but this young man can think. He devised a plan to divide his necklace into a single ring, a chain of two, and a chain of four, then combine them in just the right ways to ensure he never overpaid for his room. Oh, Raja, he may be just the person to help run your estates. Ah, said the Raja. Do I need such a person? My Raja, said Bhagat, as this honorable woman has said, I came here with only seven golden rings, but because I planned and calculated, I was able to avoid wasting even one. I have experience in making the smallest treasures last as long as possible. It would be the highest honor to help you do the same for our people. Impressive thinking, said the Raja. Bhagat, will you stay? Bhagat arrived home at dusk the next day. Amma, our fortune has changed. So you are the Raja's singer? No, Amma, you are right. I will be the Raja's thinker. From then on, 
Bhagat and his mother lived at the palace. Bhagat planned and saved so all the Raja's people prospered. Their days were filled with hard work and abundance. And Bhagat filled their nights with song. The end.